Welcome to the Alternative Healers Coffee Chat. The purpose of this podcast is to acquaint listeners with different modalities and to empower them on their healing journey. My name is Chanel Mulligan, and today I have with me Emily Dexter, who is a mosaic of a lot of different beautiful things. Your psychic bestie, author, influencer, nerd, you know, all of the fun stuff. Um, thank you for joining me today, Emily. <laughs> Oh my gosh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be on the show and to, to coffee chat some more with you. Yes. <laughs> We've already been chatting a bit this morning and it's great. Yes. It, it, it's almost one of those things. It's like you have to record. It's time to go on. <laughs> so thank oh. you. <laughs> Absolutely. So oh. with the, the podcast, you know, wanting to introduce people to different types of healing modalities so that you realize there's so much more than traditional kind of medicine and traditional ways of looking at things, trying to challenge people to look outside of their normal box. And I'm guessing some people would be like, how is like a psychic and an author, you know, help be an alternative healer? If somebody were to ask you that, how would you respond? Oh boy. Okay. Um, absolutely. I have a very long winded response here. Love so I'll it. try to keep it kind of, kind of at least contained within itself. Um, so I'm going to just give a quick analogy because I think that it helps the most. Um, when you're thinking about, I want to develop my psychic abilities or I want to tune into spirituality, the whatever I tell anyone is like, okay, well, what healing work have you done first? Because you can't, you genuinely cannot until you've healed some stuff. So we're all born with this wonderful, beautiful, flowy magic river inside of us. It's beautiful. Some of them are rushing rivers when we come on planet and some are like little tiny trickles. Um, but no matter what size your river is, when you enter on planet, you spend the next X amount of time polluting and jamming up and damming your river as much as humanly possible. So between any limiting beliefs you grab on, you're like, Ta-da, I'll have some plastic bags. Or any traumatic events, like giving the river some beavers, like all of anything like that. Sometimes it's just even, um, you know, fears or talking down to yourself, those kinds of things. And then your river gets more and more jammed up because that is the things that cause us pain. And those things are intimately connected. So um, on a very personal level, when I help people activate and open up their psychic abilities, the first thing we do is healing work. We do block pulling and releasing. We do downloads. We do feeling work in the body. All these different things. Um, basically, a healing modality of my own design, to be totally honest, after years and years and years of using it for myself, um, to open and release all of those things so that your magical river can flow again. And that goes the same with your life. It goes hand in hand. They're all the same and they, they hold space for one another. And then on the fiction side, um, stories are the way we heal the world. The end. <laughs> that is my deep, long-held and true belief that fiction is healing innately. And I think for a while, we kind of lost that thread in human storytelling. But if you think about it, stories are the ways we've connected with each other, with bigger ideas forever. That's why Aesop has fables. That is the whole reason is that it's, hey, kids, these are things you want to incorporate into your life. So we're going to tell you in a story. Healing can be done in the same way in a story format. And whether that is a visual story and you're watching a play or a movie or a show or you're reading a story, any of those things that can actually be leveraged to be healing as well. Um, having fictional characters model things for you, heal themselves for you it actually activates your energy and heals in that capacity too. So the truth of it is anything can be healing if you put intention and understanding behind it. Um, and everything that we think is disconnected is actually, of course, completely connected. So that's how it answer. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Thank um, you. And how do you see your personal role in that healing process? Like how, how does that present for you? Um, like on a world scale or like on a personal scale? Let's start with personal scale. Okay. Um, on a personal scale, I think that healing and energy work and spirituality should be as simple and fun as possible. That is my deep held belief. Um, I also think it should be casual. And I know that sounds weird, but when I say casual, um, no one likes small talk, period. No one likes that. Everyone wants to come in and be seen as who they are and have deep conversation immediately. That's what I mean by casual. 
healing work should be something that can casually be brought up around the dinner table. Magic should be something that be casually brought up around the dinner table and no one would be surprised. It wouldn't be an admission. It would just be, Hey, this is what I'm working on right now. And everyone would be like, amazing. I'm working on that too. Or this is it. And it can just be collaborative and lovely that way. So those are kind of my goals when it comes to healing work on a very personal level is anytime something feels really heavy and really hard. I'm not saying that that nothing is ever going to feel that way, but when it does, the first question I ask myself is, oh, how can I add levity to this? Obviously, I'm missing some element of making this fun, simple, and casual. How can I do that? And I think it really comes down to a shift in belief around the universe being responsive to hard work and dedication and all these things that society has convinced us dictates our worth and more understanding that the universe is not intentionally trying to make things difficult for us the universe is saying hey this is the map you gave yourself let me give you cheat codes if you'd like to accept them you can use them and so it's a matter of me finding the cheat codes and applying them to life as much as i can that's gorgeous. And the cheat codes and the casualness, you know, um, I guess going first to the casual concept, you know, so many people are, I'll say in the spiritual closet in so many ways in different, all, you know, if not in their everyday life with their family and friends, definitely in the professional life, there's always seems to be another layer you have to uncover in that process. And it's not easy. You know, no. as, as we know, and like you said, we have this belief that it ha it's going to be hard or it has to be hard. And how would you recommend somebody kind of try to reframe that for themselves? Um, great question. I would start thinking about why it has to be hard. Um, I would do like a five whys. Ask yourself why five times. The fifth one, you're going to be like a five-year-old stomping your foot being like, because, and that's what you want to get to, because that's how you're finding the root belief that is actually dictating why things have to be hard. And usually it's not actually things have to be hard. It's a belief around if things are easy, I'm doing something wrong, or I didn't earn it, or there's no value in it, those kinds of things. And once you have that, then you know which direction to work on. Then you know which place to move forward in because not everyone has the same set of limiting beliefs or blocks sitting in their space. Um, and that that's the place to kind of throw some of that energy. Um, and that's where I would suggest anyway to start it out on. The other thing is start modeling simplicity for yourself. Start modeling some, oh, wow, that was so easy. When something does work out easy, validate that. When you want to do something, instead of being like, okay, well, I have to make time for the whatever, just be like, okay, well, tonight, even if I only have 10 minutes, I'm going to do a tiny bit of that thing because that's going to be easy for me to do because I can put in 10 minutes. Those little tiny things teach your human brain, which is 50% of healing and 50% of activating your psychic abilities is teaching your human brain that it's okay. Um, so it teaches your human brain, like things can be easy and we didn't die. Go us. <laughs> so <laughs> the more you model that, the more your human brain is going to accept ease as a likelihood and not a lightning strike. That makes sense. And I know one term you had used with one of the sessions I had with you was called, um, it is safe and possible. Mm -hmm. And I loved that concept of kind of integrating. It is safe and possible to do this. And it allows and opened up kind of a creativity and curiosity. Well, how is it possible? <clears throat> mm -hmm. And yeah. for people, um, how did you kind of get to that point of using that language? Because I think it's so beautiful. No, that's a really wonderful question. So the first time I ever heard that phrase, I was in a theta healing class. Um, one of the many energy healing modalities that I was like, I'm going to fix all this mess of me. I'm going to do all of the modalities. So I'm certified in all sorts of stuff that I don't use to be totally honest, but you know, all sorts of stuff um, on that journey, because I was really rebelling against this narrative of like, Oh, you can do it, but it's going to be a challenge. You can do it, but you gotta, you know, it's, you can overcome. And I was like, and basically like F that I will do it and it will be easy and fun period because I've already done the overcoming. I've already done all the hard shit and I don't want to do that some more. So I basically went to energy healing to try to be like, give me the fun things, which, you know, it didn't, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> um, when I first came across that phrase there, uh, they have a couple of like kind of big ones that they talk about and that, you know, things are safe and possible kind of comes up that way. And I would say it, but more in like a casual sort of like, 
offhanded sort of way when I'm like doing belief work, or whatever, I'd be like, oh, it's, you know, safe and possible, or whatever. And I didn't really think about it um, until like a couple of years later. And I really realized that I was applying it to my life without noticing that I was applying it to my life. Um, and that's when I actually grounded in as part of my like active vocabulary when doing healing work. Um, that one is that one and it's in my highest and best. Those those are two that I like really actively ground in kind of around the same time. Um, and the reason for that is basically because I was <laughs> I'm a type of person who's never just done things the way that anyone else said I should ever do them ever. Um, I've only ever done them backwards, upside down and sideways, but I've like been like, you're going to work the end. So I'm doing it this way. And it doesn't matter what anyone else says, because I'm going to do it. I guess the root of it is I'm really unafraid of failure. So I will try like 75 different things. And if it fails, I'm like literally not deterred, not even for a heartbeat. I'm like, okay, cool. That one failed. So I'm doing this now. And it just, whatever. And I realized that's because I was grounding in that safe and possible where before that time I was making it possible but it felt like I was making it possible it felt like I was squishing it in um and then once I started using that safe and possible especially when doing belief work and belief pulling I was switching beliefs of like oh you know I'm unsafe here or I'm not enough for this whatever and I'm switching it over to like it's safe and possible to be enough it's safe and possible you know to be good at this it's safe and whatever um and that basically flipped the script and made it all the possibilities a thing and then I just kind of lived it and embraced it and now we're here doing things that have no title <laughs> <laughs> and you something you just said resonated with me and and if for those who you know may be watching the YouTube video I was like oh! um making that surprise face and covering my mouth um because I have always felt like I do things backwards as well and what I on the opposite of you is I always had to try to do it perfectly and then I'd get frustrated and angry with myself and or you know give up or you know explore it in a different way or put it on pause and then it would come back naturally and at the time those were happening I had no real consideration for any of my gifts my intuition I disrespected all of that um, now I look back and go oh that's why it happened that way. It wasn't that I was quote unquote failing. It was, I needed to learn a couple of things before the process could come back around and I could step back into that flow. Um, and that yeah. curiosity. No, exactly. And I'm so glad you called that, that up to attention is failure is a completely imaginary concept when it comes to like, when I look at the energy of it, it doesn't exist. It's pretend. Um, and the funny thing is, is most people have their software wired in wrong because they think success is pretend because they don't feel like they've ever had it based on society's definition. And they think failure is inevitable. Don't do that. Switch it around. Failure is 100% pretend. There's, there's no energy there. Um, that's just not a thing. Also, I do just want to say, if you're someone who does feel like you have to do it perfect, I deeply believe that's because society has ingrained our value with our contribution. And so if you're doing it backwards, you need to be proving it to yourself that you're supposed to be doing it backwards. You need to all these different things. And if you don't do it perfect, there's a negative connotation there when realistically we're allowed to be 75 different people at any given time. And none of those people have to be pretty. <laughs> um, and that is OK. And so I just want to like highlight that for anyone out there as well. Um, Thank you. That's not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> and I think a lot of people do have that um, belief and understanding that it has to you know, either be hard or it has to be easy. There doesn't seem to be a middle ground to that in that belief system of current society. And it's hard to navigate that, that there is a middle, like it could be both easy and hard. You may have to put a little more quote unquote work into it, but if you're having fun with it, if you're curious about it, if you want to learn about it, then what do you have to lose almost? Mm -hmm. that exactly. I think I also would say that easy and hard are determined by our perception of them. So if you want to switch your perception of them, then switch your perception of them. You can actually do that. And I know that sounds way oversimplified and I completely understand, but this was like something I worked on for a really long time because this idea of things being hard and oh my gosh, I had such a hard day. And then I just started asking myself like, but why was it hard? Like, oh, this thing, this thing, this happened. Okay. But I'm here and I made it through those things. And realistically, in the grand scheme of things, I kind of just flowed through them. Like, yeah, it sucked, but I just, we just moved through. We're okay. Like, 
this is okay. So I do think there's a shift there. And I also do think that there is a lack of neutrality in the incredibly strict binary that this structure of this society is constructed on. Um, and the best way I can actually describe neutrality in a way that like you could be midpoint is if you think of the element of ether, um, because everyone thinks of the four elements, right? Wind, fire, water, air. There's also ether. It's actually five. Ether is the stuff we can't see. It's the space between stars. That's that's ether. And if you're like, oh, well, it's either really hard or really easy, or it could be ether. You could just be in between the two things. And that's okay, too. Some things can go into one bucket. Some things go into another bucket. Or some days you are allowed to just be neutral and have a neutral feeling day without feeling that you're doing it wrong because you're just having a neutral time. And that's fine, too. Yeah. And one of my <laughs> most recent podcast guests, we were talking about something similar is that balance that we're on the spectrum and we kind of just bounce and flow and roll and play in, in the in-between. And that's sometimes you can find the best peace and balance there. You know, we, we think that, oh, you have to be like, again, to your point, the polarity successful or failure, but sometimes the, the, most learning and some of the bigger ahas are in the quiet little mundane things that happen that bring us awareness and clarity into ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, we talked you mentioned kind of about reframing hard and easy for yourself and it is harder than it sounds. How, do you mm -hmm. have any thoughts or recommendations on how somebody could redefine those words words for themselves or kind of explore that maybe a little further? Totally. Um, I would recommend you start exploring why it has to be just for you before you actually explore the difficult, easy binary. So if you start to actually think about things like, oh, well, what could make this hard thing easy? you know, easier. Usually it's, well, if I asked for help or if the universe just navigated me through this X, Y, Z, whatever it is, then it would have been easier for me. Then it would have been more simple for me. I could have still gone through that hard thing, air quotes around hard, um, but it would have been easier. I could have flowed. So then you start asking for help from your guides. Then you start asking for help from the universe, those types of things, because the truth of it is humans are not supposed to do everything individually. We are herd animals by nature, and we have this vast network of soul support that we come in and completely forget about because of the nature of reality that we're in. And so the more you realize, oh, if that support is there, it's there because I matter. Because if I didn't matter, I wouldn't have that support. It's been there your whole life. You can look back. Every single person can look back on something and be like, oh, wow, I can't it. believe I made it out of that. And then if you're like, oh, wow, I guess I probably had help making it out of that. I probably had this thing just work out. Um, and you can start kind of relying on that. It makes the hard stuff a lot easier knowing that never in your life do you have to do it all by yourself. You can always ask your guides. You can always ask your higher self. You can ask deities. You can ask creator, whoever. Your guides are the most accessible and the most responsive for the most part. Um, but that notion of starting to ask for help, even not to other people, but just to your guides, et cetera, makes a big difference. The other thing is, is a lot of times people have a very Santa Claus-esque idea about their guides where it's like every once in a while I ask them for this thing and I hope I get it. And then there's like a built up, oh, of course it didn't happen like that, blah, 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 blah. And so they miss the signs of like how their guides actually helped them navigate whatever thing it was or how their guides are like, oh, you want that thing? Okay, cool. All of a sudden you're going to get three lessons real hard and fast real quick because if you want that thing you have to learn these really fast that's the only way we can bridge that gap and because they're thinking that it's going to be santa that brings them a gift on christmas morning it makes it really hard to see that so i would say adjust your perspective there start making it more of a conversation talk to your guides daily about nothing mundane stuff what should i wear today what should i have for lunch like stuff like that totally fine um to start getting a feel for it and also ex start examining whole parts of a situation and that's also what i would recommend to again kind of get over from the everything is hard to things are allowed to be easy sort of space it's safe and possible to have ease or simplicity is to examine the whole part of the situation and also if you're doing it from that kind of examination point you're a lot less emotionally invested even if it's a heavy emotional situation you can be a little bit more stepped back and be like okay 
how did this situation serve me? Why, how, what ways did this situation work out? And I know some things are always going to be hard and heavy and difficult. And I'm not saying that every one is going to be happy sunshine because we exist in a physical reality. And that is part of it. The end, um, the new age idea of just like, oh, light and love is not for me <laughs> at all. Um, but when you're examining, the, you'll see little places where like, oh man, there was actually that final bit of coffee left in the pot that really helped me or you know there was someone actually right as I was pulling up that parking spot opened up and I got to just pull in and have a good cry exactly where I needed to like those little things are there and they're like light posts I literally have a light post tattoo partly for this reason um they're like light posts that guide you through everything so I would yeah. say look at the light posts first yeah I love that idea and one thing you mentioned talking about like the limiting beliefs and how they come up when you hear the word just, it mm. should just, you know, for some reason that like jumped out at me because mm. when we use that language internally or to somebody else, well, you should just know that mm -hmm. just is a huge flag and indicator that there's an expectation that you have mm. that you may not have, it's unconscious or that you need to kind of bring to the surface and explore. So also maybe finding keywords and language that you use that, oh, this is a flag I need to step back and look at what I'm actually saying and what is my expectation and how I address that. Yeah. Unless you're talking about time, like, oh, I just did that. No, you don't just, you don't just do anything. Like, unless you are literally talking about time, which is how the word was supposed to be functioned for in our language anyway was a indicator of time um like there's also like a justly or justice sort of connotation to it but when you look back at it it's usually talking about a marker of time we've just applied it to like a notion like again that expectation thing um but you don't just do anything you also don't should anything either <laughs> Um, the first thing we do in the writing program that I, I mentor the forgotten storytellers after your first draft we do it we they note down in the publishing material do a just edit get rid of all the dang justs in your manuscript and you will be shocked because there will be 150 of them and you'll be like how did i write just that many times and it's a filler word it is like um but it's one that has a connotation of expectation and that sucks so yes do not just all over yourself do not should all over yourself don't do it <laughs> agree definitely mm -hmm. regarding you I know on your TikToks you really talk to people about validating and connecting with their spirit guides and there are still a lot of people that okay you're telling me to lean on a spirit guide and talk to them and ask for help but I'm not even sure they're here so can mm -hmm. you kind of reshare for this audience some of those validation tools that you suggest for people to touch base and start trusting more in their guides Mm -hmm. first off I would say um this idea like okay I'm not even sure they're here when you're sitting in that sort of space which it's fine all of us have doubt that is okay um it makes it a little bit challenging because you come at it as like I will prove that you're here prove that you're there for me and no proof is ever going to be enough outside of them standing in front of your face and being like ta-da like here we are I am here for you you're not gonna accept it so it needs to start being less of a prove your existence to me and more of a okay I'm going to assume your existence is here and I'm gonna ask for the help that I need I'm gonna have these conversations and that way when you have the little signs come up blind trust is not required so we're just gonna start there before I get in there but when you have little signs and things come up you're a lot more likely to be like oh interesting maybe that was my guide hey guide was that you could you validate that again further for me than you are if you're like okay well prove your existence give me this thing to show me that you're there they will you just won't believe it because even if they gave you that thing you'd be like no that was too small or they didn't do it in that way and they're sitting there like come on what are you talking about I did do it in that way that being said our guides do not get annoyed with us like that they know exactly when we're going to get cognizant of them they completely understand they signed up for this um so a couple things that I do recommend. One, every time you've ever asked for a sign in your whole life, you've gotten it for sure. You've just not known what it is. And because you never specified anything about it, what it is, how it should come, anything like that, um, you definitely missed it. So, you know, you'll be like, give me a sign that I made the right career decision. Your guide will be like, mm, give her a feather. She'll get it. No, 
<laughs> did not understand. Thank you for the feather. Didn't get it though. So instead, things like, okay, if you need to validate for me that I made the right choice, please send me X, Y, Z thing. It could be a song. It could be a number. It could be an image, whatever. They're not going to send it the way you expect. I 100% guarantee. So however they send it, however random that comes up, just acknowledge it. When we were in Greece, it was really funny. I always ask for like, like a piece of sea glass or for like a hagstone or something like that. And I was like, I'd love to find a hagstone. That'd be great. But they always do it in the most absurd way. We're on a hike and there's this huge boulder, huge boulder with this hole all the way through it. Like you found a hagstone. I was like, that doesn't count. Like I can't take that home with me. <laughs> I was like, ah, thanks for the stone. Awesome. So um, things like that, like it can come in a myriad of ways. Um, so just starting simple, like just being like, hey, or start asking for things that you need, like concretely. It, it, most of the time when we go to ask our guides, it's like, hey, if maybe you could possibly kind of sort of help with it. Not as cool. I got it. I got it. It's fine. But I could look. Don't. They, they're like, okay, well, I'll try to help with that, I guess, if that's what you want. But I don't know if you fully do, because you don't know if you fully do. So instead of being like, hey, I need clarity on this situation. And I need to get that clarity in some way before I go back to work on Monday, please. Something like that. And notice how it will come because it usually comes very fr through another person, through a song. You'll wake up after a dream and all of a sudden you'll have the clarity. I mean, there's a million different ways it can come through. Or even just things like if tonight goes like this, I'll go this way. If tonight goes like that, I'll go that way. You guys are the magical omnipotent beings. You do it and I'll just respond. Um, and that also is a really, really powerful technique. So mostly it's just a conversation sort of thing. And again, reminder that blind trust isn't a requirement. If something feels like it might have meaning, ask them to validate it. If you got the clarity, but you're not 100% sure still, ask them to validate it. If you're like, hey, I really want to connect with you. Please give me some way to connect with you. That's fine. Um, we are humans. We're not going to just be like, yay, magical thing in the sky. Totally trust, especially those of us with religious trauma. But no, it's not a prayer. It's a, it's a collaborative relationship. They have their own personalities. There's multiple of them. Everyone has multiple of them. And those personalities are going to come through to you over time. It's less of like, oh, please do this. And I hope I've been good enough to earn it. You exist. Ta-da. You've earned it. I'm giving you permission right now. You've earned your guide's support. Congratulations. You did it. Gold star on your forehead. Um, and it's more of a like communication there. The other thing too is like if something random, air quotes, does happen, or if you do smack your head, you can always be like, about why did that happen like please give me some clarity there and they will it's mostly a matter of acknowledgement and also defining the communication because oftentimes they think you're way more capable than you think you are because they know the higher self version of you they know the complete version of you that built the map so you come down here took your amnesia pill have gone through all of the stuff like in a very different way and they're like okay um, you know, I, oh, she needs clarity here. Awesome. Well, I'm going to send her a lucky penny and then have that song play on the radio. And she's totally, she'll get the message. And that's, they, that's them thinking that you get it. And unless you're like, Hey, I actually need these types of things, or I like need more clarity on this. Then they're oftentimes like, Oh, sorry, my bad. Let me get you better clarity on that. And like, so it's, it's more of a, it's a more human thing than we give it credit for. Yeah. Because our, our brains are looking for so many tangible things that, and again, looking for the big ahas versus a little mm -hmm. penny or the feather and recognizing mm -hmm. they're going to use what's available to them in our environment, in our mm -hmm. lives. And yeah. Yeah. And don't forget there's tools too. Like you can do cards. Those are not training wheels, by the way. Those are a full on system of using magic. So like use cards or a pendulum or even like TikTok roulette or Spotify roulette. Be like, okay, the next, I'm in the next five videos, I need clarity on this. Awesome. Pay attention to what the videos are. Usually it'll probably be funny. Not going to lie. Or Spotify. Be like, I need a song that validates this for me in the next two songs or the next song that comes on. You can use tools like that very much so for communication. Yeah. And it's <laughs> interesting. We're talking about this because I had one of those instances this morning um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm getting it then to the season of this podcast and I'm like, okay, do I continue? What am I going to do? And I went to go do something. I was like, oh, what time is it? All of a sudden I got this urge. I had to look at the time. It was 11, 11. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. You know, obviously me working on this podcast is still important. Great. Thank you. Like, but it mm -hmm. was just 
interesting to me how it kind of played out this revalidation that yes keep going keep doing this because I couldn't find the microphone this morning I couldn't do all that I was like oh. and mm-hmm. then 11 11 and I was like okay got it noted thank you yeah mm-hmm. and even before we hopped on we were getting all sorts of guide like pings coming in and all sorts of fun stuff there so obviously they were shoving you <laughs> yes and, and- <laughs> it's sometimes what was it I just had a thought that just went ding. um something about the 11 11 and it being I don't know if it, it's important it will come back <laughs> yeah um I will say taking it to like the next level if you're like okay I'm getting validations from my guides but I don't really know what they mean but I know it's coming from them I'm not able to connect it that's when you want to start getting into like okay well what way do you naturally perceive energy what is your clear sense which I'm not going to explain all of them on here because there's eight of them and I can go way in detail on it but I do have videos on, on YouTube and stuff about it if you want to dive into it more um, but your clear sense is basically your energetic perception style and that can be like oh I just know things or I see things or I feel things or I taste things or I, I emotionally feel things there's a million you know different combinations of how those things can work as well but once you start getting into that and really understanding how you perceive things then you get deeper and deeper messages where you'll be like okay this 11 11 is actually related to the podcast i feel that i just know that okay awesome great that is kind of how you bridge that gap too because it is it's a baby steps thing you don't have to know everything about everything all at once which is also a spiritual block that a lot of people have (laughs) they get into spirituality it's like i need to know all the things immediately no you do not you absolutely do not. You don't need to know all the things literally ever. If you really don't ever want to astral project, then do not. Like you don't have to do those things in order to be spiritually and more aligned. Yeah. Use your discernment and what feels right to you. And what mm-hmm. had come to mind was that earlier, the thank you more, please. And that was something I um, started integrating when I first started was to your point, kind of taking the assumption that, okay, they're doing these things for me. This is where it's coming from. And in learning to trust that, you know, if it was something that I was really excited about that, I'd be like, thank you more, please. And kind of reinforcing, because that also helped my human brain go, oh, there could be more of these good things out there. Cool. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yep. Yeah, I also like, I love that. I do that too. Like, hey, that was great. I want some more. Um, but also like, that's how magic works. Like magic is not sparkles and Cinderella's dress changing into this big, beautiful blue thing. Magic is more of like, oh, wow. The, all these things aligned exactly correct to make it so that I could do this thing here. Fantastic. I'm going to really set the intention that this happens to me again. And then it does. And the more you do that, the more things shift. And that's how magic works. <laughs> yep so i know we're getting close to the end of our time together mm-hmm. if you could give the audience one message or a thing you think they would need to know at the time this airs what would you like to say to them okay kind of twofold read fiction books if you'd like to develop magic genuinely um read them and then apply them and i know that sounds very odd but read those books that you are excited to read that have magical elements in them um fantasy books or even magical realism those sorts of things and then when you finish if there's a character you really resonated with or magic you really liked ask yourself how can you apply that in life right now there is always a way to do that whether it's you're going to meditation and go to that location and in that location you're going to get it like wisdom etc that took place in the book whether it's like, okay, well, I really liked, you know, the energy of tea magic. <laughs> There's a book out there that the magic system's based on tea. I really like that. So whenever I make my tea, I'm going to set intention into it. I mean, there's you can apply any type of magic. People have tried to like quiz me on this before with, you know, books that shall not be named um how does the magic there apply i'm like oh transmutation we can talk about transmutation like we can talk about dream magic we can like there's so many different things you can do so if you want to grow your psychic ability if you want to work on your healing read fiction books people ask me for book recommendations and i'll be like sure i have a whole list of fiction ones because that's the ones i recommend you actually read um Fiction books are also the least likely books to give you more limiting beliefs, more blocks, or rules you don't need. Um, Where self-help books give you limiting belief blocks and rules you don't need. So that's what I highly recommend um, for the most part is to dive into that. Um, Also to have fun on purpose, um, which I know sounds 
odd, but most of the time when we reach a certain level of adulthood, we have forgotten what we like to do. We have forgotten what is fun to us. The fun we're having is usually by proxy of someone else being like, come do this with me. Or even you being like, well, I know this is fun for the group. So I'll invite this person to go do this fun thing with me. And you'll get fun from it for sure. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do those things. By all means, go for it. But you yourself need to also have fun on purpose. And that is where clarity comes in. That's where magic comes in. That's where understanding yourself comes in. And that's where healing comes in, which is ultimately what this podcast is about. Um, and I, it's not just inner child, it's inner human. It's who you, it's a person. And I think a lot of times we throw a lot of energy like, oh, my inner child needs healing. Of course they do. All of our inner children need healing. But also you as a being get to have fun. And it's not just for the version of you that existed when you were six. It's for the version of you that exists now. Beautiful. Thank you. How can the audience find you and or contact you? Yeah. So a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> um, my biggest presence is on TikTok. I post multiple videos on there usually every day. Um, so lots of content there for you. Um, if you if you want to follow me on TikTok, my handle on everything is liker of words. <laughs> Um, also it's just that handle. I don't have any other handles. If anyone has another handle that's trying to contact you, it is not me. Um, <laughs> I like her words. The end. Um, I'm also on Instagram and threads because of that. Um, and then I do a decent amount of content on YouTube. I'm really getting into long form, which is fantastic. Um, so if you're, if you want to get more in depth, I do a lot of stuff there, especially with like some channeled history content, because that's another passion of mine where I'll channel in people who existed in the ancient past and tell you their stories and how things actually went down um, or talk about, you know, history that comes from travel and those sorts of things, which we're traveling very soon. It's going to be super fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm there. Also, my website is emilydexterpsychic.com. If you head over there, it shows you, I do have multiple digital courses. I have a Patreon mentorship sort of situation. You can get readings with me. I am booked out for those pretty far, but they are still there. Um, it all is in divine timing, which is why my guides have not let me shorten like the booking window or anything, because it allows you to detach from whatever is the current problem you're trying to book me for, let that work out, and then have the divine timing of when you have the reading is the right time for you. Um, so you can do readings with me. Um what else do I offer? I have a bunch of stuff. Oh, I have group readings too. Those come more regularly. I do about two a month of those. So if you really do need clarity on something, I do offer group readings there. Um, yeah, I, I have a, a bunch of fun things. So <laughs> check it out. Yes. And I will put them in the description of the YouTube video as well. So thank mm -hmm. you, Emily, for joining me. I have oh enjoyed gosh. our conversation today. And to the audience, like, subscribe, and share. Thank you, everyone. Bye. <laughs>